Hi, my name is Eric Schmidt, and today I'll be talking about how a car engine cooling system works. Before we go into anything else, I'd like to talk a bit about the background of how a car engine works. So, car engines use their spark plugs as well as the fuel inside their tank to create controlled explosions inside the engine. These controlled explosions propel the car forward and allow it to move, but they also create an immense amount of heat that needs to be controlled or the engine will be destroyed. There's a few different methods to controlling this heat. One is used in older cars like a Volkswagen Beetle or modern motorcycles, and it's a method called air cooling. But because this isn't a very common method, we won't discuss it in this coding project. Instead, we'll talk about a method called liquid cooling, which is used in most modern cars nowadays. This method works by using a coolant that consists of antifreeze and water. So this coolant passes by a car radiator, and this car radiator cools down this liquid so that it is cold, and then pumps it towards the engine, which we can see here. Once it passes by the engine, the coolant absorbs the heat from the engine, and then becomes much, much hotter. So now we have a hot coolant, which then passes back to the radiator and becomes cool again. So this constant cycle here, lets us cool down our engine and allows us to regulate it and keep it at a safe temperature. Most modern cars operate at around 120 degrees Celsius, which is the maximum before they break down. Any farther past this and you're risking destroying your engine. So to go into this coding project, I want to start off by modeling how a car engine works without this cooling system. So in my model, I have a two by two meter box and placed an engine on the left side here. So this engine will be running for about 100 seconds and will be creating a lot of heat. And as we can see here, we'd expect most of the heat to be right next to the engine because it's giving off that heat. And then as it goes farther on, it will become weaker and weaker. So that's represented by the change in the color here where it's a lighter and lighter color. So we're using an equation called the heat equation to model this. And this can be seen right here, but it can be broken down into a much simpler form right below it, which is saying that the partial derivative of temperature with respect to time is equal to a constant alpha times the second partial derivative of temperature with respect to X position plus the second partial derivative of temperature with respect to Y. So this code below right here uses this heat equation and the boundaries that I've set up to create a model of this. So we can see that after one second of the car engine being started, we have about 12 degrees right next to the engine. And then it's starting to spread out over to the right, to the other side of the boundary. So after 10 seconds, the car engine is already at 170 degrees, which is past the breaking point that I was telling you about 120 degrees. And then we can see even at its lowest point, it's at 120 degrees. So on the far other side, it's at that breaking point as well. So after 50 seconds, we're already past 730 degrees. And then our lowest point is a little bit less than 700 degrees. And after this full 100 seconds, we are past 1430, which is a crazy amount of heat. And our car engine would have broke way before this, but it's interesting to see how this works. So the next thing we have here is an animation showing this with time. So instead of looking at individual slices, we can look at the whole slice or the whole animation of this car. So it's important to note that if we look back at the scaling on these, the maximum temperature is very, very close to our minimum temperature. So the maximum is about 730 and the minimum is 690. Maximum here is 1430, the minimum is 1390. So using this, it's, it's a kind of a weird scaling system. So if we look at the scale for this animation, we start at 1400 maximum and zero for our minimum. 
which means that for all of these other ones, our maximum and minimum fall in between one of these ranges here. So we'd expect it all to be exactly one color because for this one here, we have a maximum of 1430 and we have a minimum of 1390, which would fall about here. So for our final one, we'd expect the whole chart to be yellow. And it wouldn't look exactly like this because the scaling is different. So when we play this animation here, we can see that the car heats up incredibly fast and the whole temperature model is basically the same exact thing. So we don't want this for our car engine because that would destroy it incredibly fast. So instead we use our cooling system. So I've already kind of explained how this works, but I'm going to talk a few or a bit more about a few other things. One of them being the temperature boundary that I decided to place the coolant at. So because the coolant contains antifreeze, my research has told me that the coldest temperature that the coolant can get before it starts freezing is about negative 45 degrees. So I've placed on the right boundary a negative 45 degree uh, boundary, I guess. So we have on the left boundary, we have a constantly heating up engine that's going to be giving off heat. In the right boundary, we have a constant temperature of negative 45 degrees. So we'll be pumping this negative 45 degree coolant into our engine, which will be heating it up and then sending it back to the coolant or the car radiator. So another thing we have to do is we have to extend our heat equation. So before we just had this dt dt is equal to alpha of the Laplacian of temperature. But now we have to account for the partial derivatives with respect to the direction of the fluid. So what that means is we have to account for the velocity of the fluid here, which we didn't have to account for last time. So all that is doing is adding this x term and this y term. So that gives us our velocity in the x direction, which would be on the top and the bottom, and the velocity of our y direction, which would be on our left or our right and our left. So using that, we can simplify this equation once again. So we have the equation we had before, and now it's equal to the central difference of the x velocity minus the central difference of the y velocity. So plugging that all into our code here, we have a new model for this engine. So after one second that our car started, we see that we have our negative 45 degree on our right side, which is the temperature of the coolant. And then we have our engine, which is starting to heat up here. But after 10 seconds after the car started, we still have this negative 45 degree here, and we have about over 60 degrees for our lower temperature here, which seems like it could be bad, but as we look on, it's the same after 50, 50 seconds, and it's the same after 100 seconds. So after the full time this car is running, our heat has actually been maintained. So you might be wondering why we have this local hotspot and this local cold spot over here. The reason for this is that if we go back to our diagram, we can see that we would expect our hottest spot to be right here and our coldest spot to be right here. Because as the coolant passes by the car radiator, it's going to cool down the liquid a lot. So when it's passing through here, this would be our coldest spot here. We'd also expect the hottest spot of our car to be as soon as the coolant passes by the engine. So this didn't have any time to disperse the heat. So our hottest spot would be right here. So that's what we get when we look at our uh, graphs right over here. It's also important to notice that how big of a difference the temperature change was. So when we didn't have our cooling system after 100 seconds we were at 1400 degrees but with the cooling system we're at about 60 which is a huge change and is actually below the threshold i was talking about earlier where car engines break down of about 120 degrees celsius so 
this means that our car would be able to function fine and it would really help the car not break immediately. So moving on, we can look at our animation here of how the temperature changes with time. So as you can see, nothing changes for this whole time because our car is constantly flowing uh, the coolant through the engine and is able to maintain it and keep it at a thermal equilibrium. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something about how car engines work. Before I made this video, I didn't know anything about coolant systems and I think it's really, really cool how they've designed this to make sure that car engines work. Thank you for your time and uh, I hope you learned something. Bye.